So you're thinking about moving to Las Vegas? I want to know about property taxes. In this video, we're going to go all the way through the property taxes here in Las Vegas, Henderson, Summerlin, Boulder City, uh, Mesquite, all of it. But let's get after it right now. This is your first time to the channel and you want to know everything there is to know about the Las Vegas real estate market, living here, working here, and doing everything that you can, then go ahead and hit subscribe, tap that bell for notifications, and you'll be the first to know for everything that's happening here in Las Vegas. Hey, my name is Anthony. I'm a former attorney turned real estate professional who's been in the Las Vegas area since 1981, so I know a thing or two about this market. My team and I, we get calls, texts, and emails every day from people just like you looking to make their move to Las Vegas, and we absolutely love it. Look, if you're looking to move in the next 9 to 90 days, go ahead and shoot me a text, give me a call, send me an email, and we would love to make your move go as smooth as possible. So. As I said, today we're gonna dive into the super exciting, totally amazing world of property taxes. Bum, bum, bum. Look, I know property taxes are not the most exciting thing to talk about, but they're an important component when you're thinking about moving to a new area and knowing what they are. And our property tax situation here is actually a little bit unique and a little bit different. So let's go through it and separate the myth from the reality and what they really are. So let's start at the beginning. So taxes are collected at the county level, not the city level. So Clark County encompasses everything that if you're moving to the Las Vegas area, that would include everything in there. So the Clark County tax assessor is who collects the taxes. Now, that doesn't matter if you're living in Summerlin, you're living in Henderson, you're living in North Las Vegas, you're living in Centennial Hills, you're living in Mesquite, you're living in Boulder City, or even living in Laughlin, all controlled by the Clark County Tax Assessor. Just because it's on a county-wide level does not mean that there's one property tax rate. In fact, there are 112 different districts, different tax districts within Clark County, and each of them has their own nominal property tax rate. And that ranges from 2.5% to 3.4%. But wait, that is the nominal rate. There's another special thing that happened in around 2005 that changes that whole calculation and 2.5 to 3.4% you go, oh, that's a lot. With what happened in 2005, this, the state legislature enacted a law that established a tax abatement program. And that basically created, consider it like rent control for taxes. So taxes are limited to what they can go up as far as each year from the previous year. So while the nominal rate may be 2.5 to 3.4%, the effective rate, the rate that you actually pay in cash to the tax man is only about, it's between 0.75 and 0.8% on average here in Clark County. A heck of a lot difference than two and a half to 3.4%. And I know that may be a little bit confusing, but if you stick around to the end of this video, I am going to go through a multi-year example to show you what happens to your taxes each year as your property and market value of your home rises, decreases, and goes sideways. And you'll see what that actually does to the actual tax that you pay to the tax man every year. So what is this tax abatement thing? Okay, so the legislature said, hey, that's too much in taxes. We are going to limit the amount of increase in taxes every year, and we're going to do it statutorily with a law that will, will make it that they can't go above a certain amount every year. Like I said, it's very much like rent control in, if you live in a rent control area, but for taxes. So there are two classifications for properties to determine which rate of increase you're going to have levied upon you. So there are owner-occupied, 
which is pretty self-explanatory and that's pretty much everybody that I talk to on a regular basis. It's an owner occupied. You're buying your house to live in that house. Now you can only have one owner occupied property at a time here in Clark County and have it considered owner occupied. Everything else is classified as other use. Now other use includes commercial properties, it includes investments, it includes rentals, it includes everything else in, in that has uh, that would be taxed, have property taxes assessed to it, is included in that other use property. Now, the, the owner-occupied um, category is limited to a 3% increase per year on your taxes the actual amount that you pay to the tax man. So let's say you paid $1,000 last year to the tax man and it is an owner occupied property. Next year, if it went up by the full 3%, it would be $1,030 the, this year. It doesn't matter what happened to the actual value of your home during that time. Well, it does, and we'll go through the examples. But assuming that the uh, value increased, you would be limited to paying $1,000 last year, $1,030 the, the next year, and then 3% per annum increased potential uh, there on out. Now, if it were owner, or um, I'm sorry, not owner occupied, but if it were an other use, if it were a rental, if it were an investment, you have a, a tax cap of 8% per year. So you had a rental property. Last year it was $1,000 in taxes. This year, it can go up to $1,080. 8% of $1,080, that's how it increases. Okay, you get the point. All right, so that is makes it very important that you determine, are you owner-occupied or are you other use? Now, making that election, making the opt-in is what they call it to an owner-occupied, is something that you need to do on your property one time uh, in general, one time. So when a property transfers title and it goes from uh, Sally to Jim and through a sale, the, the assessor says, okay, it's new, we'll have it at the 8%. The new person, Jim, who bought it from Sally, needs to do the opt-in. So an opt-in is very simple. It's a postcard that gets sent out once a year um, to property owners and you can make the opt-in that, hey, this is an owner-occupied property now. It needs to be calculated at 3%. As long as you own the property, title doesn't change. Um, you don't re-deed it to some other entity or, or something along those effects. That 3% per year is locked in as long as you hold it, okay? When it transfers again and you sell the property, the new owner is gonna have to do that one time. I don't care if you hold it for five years or 500 years, maybe 500's a stretch, but 3% per year is, is what's going to what it's going to be. Now, that being said, those postcards come out in May of every year. You only need to do it one time for the property, okay? Unless something changes, either you transferred title to, let's say a trust, or, or you, you did something, or you sold the property, or something to that effect. Then it reverts back to the default, which is the 8%. So, but let's just assume that, that um, you got that in May, you only have to do it one time while you own the property. The other time you would have to change it is if you move away from the property um, and you now have that as a rental or you have it just vacant and you have another owner occupied property. So you kept this one, you bought this one, this one's staying vacant, right? So title didn't transfer, but you want to take the 3% on your new property, you would have to Tell them that this one you're opting out, you're, you're going back to the default, and you want the opt-in, the 3% on the new one. Hope that makes sense. Um, it, it's pretty straightforward. Like I said, in most cases, most of the clients that I work with, it's a one-time per property deal. Um, it's not something you have to do. Now, what if you missed that uh, May deadline and you didn't send in the postcard? 
that's okay too. It's not a, a done deal. So our fiscal year here in, in Nevada is July 1st through June 30th. Um, so if you miss that and let's say in September you go, oh, I didn't send in the card, not a problem. The, you can contact the assessor, you can do the opt-in at that point. They will go back to July 1st, recalculate your, your taxes due for the year and they will make the adjustments to those years payments and those years taxes back to the 3%. So don't get all freaked out if you forgot. It's something that can be corrected even after the July 1st fiscal year starts. The next thing that we need to know about is how do they come up with the value um, in which to tax you on. So, I mean, do they look at the MLS? Do they do, you know, do they guess? Do they just have a, a sheet that basically every year they, they think your property is increasing by X percentage? No. The way that it is statutorily done here in Nevada is they look at the replacement cost value of your home. So they take that number and then they have the market value for land. Now that one, they do look at other factors of the value of the land close to yours. So they take the replacement cost, less some depreciation for the age of the home, the, the cost of the land, the market value of the land. Those two numbers come together to become the taxable value. Then they have an assessment rate. Now the assessment rate is generally 35% of that uh, taxable value. So you had the replacement cost value of your home at $100,000. You had the land cost um, or the land value, uh, that market price of $100,000. You have a $200,000 taxable value. Now they, they put an assessment uh, factor onto it. And like I said, for most cases it's 35%. So they look at that number and they go 35% of $200,000 is what we're going to calculate your tax due on. Now remember, there's a difference between tax, tax due and amount paid, okay? And with the abatement, and when you'll see when we go through our, our example, they're two different numbers and they change and it, it, one doesn't affect how much you actually pay. So then they go and look at what district are you in? Remember there's 112 different districts here within Clark County and each of them has their own tax rate. So let's say you're at a two and a half percent location. They're gonna times that 70,000 times two and a half percent so two dollars and fifty cents per hundred, they're going to uh, they're going to say is the taxes due, and that would be seventeen hundred and fifty dollars worth of taxes due. Now that's part one, right? Part two is they have to look at the abatement. First part: Are you owner occupied or are you other use? If you're owner occupied, you're at three percent increase from last year. Let's say last year you only paid $1,000 in taxes. And again, when we go through our little example here, this will all make sense. But you paid $1,000 in taxes, even though nominally you would owe $1,750, what you have to pay is only $1,030. Make sense? Okay, good. So that's the basics of how the property taxes work here. Now, let's go through an example and we're going to go through an example that will take us through six years of property ownership and what happens when the market value of your house goes up, the market value of the house goes down, and what does it do with the actual taxes paid, right? Okay, so let's say we buy our house in year zero, okay? We bought it for $100,000 the assessed value. Now that $100,000 that first year, it's a new build, right? So they have, they've got it out for what the, the land value is, they have the cost of, uh, replacement value and it comes out to $100,000. That assessed value, remember we're gonna multiply that times 35%, 
you're going to have uh, and let's just say that uh, we are in a 3.2% tax rate um, location district within the county. So $100,000 home value, $35,000 assessed value, taxes billed at 3.2% would mean you would owe $1,120. Well, guess what? Since it's year zero, it's a brand new build. This is the first time that house has come into the tax rolls. You are going to owe $1,120. We don't care uh, whether it's owner occupied or other use at this point. Now we jump forward to next July, July 1st. Remember July 1st to June 30th. We made, when we bought the house, we sent in the postcard. We told the tax assessor, look, I'm going to live in this house. This is an owner occupied home. So now next year, when we fast forward to July 1st of next year, we they know that this is going to fall under that 3% owner occupied abatement category. All right. So all of a sudden it was a great year. The house went up in value market value to $250,000. It went up two and a half times. That's a big year. I don't know what's going on. Maybe you found gold under the house. Well, something's going on there. So that means that our assessed value then goes from 35,000 last year to 87,500 this year. Now we're gonna attack that 3.2% to the 87,500, which means your taxes billed is going to be $2,800. But here's where the cool part is. Because we said we were owner occupied, it can't go up more than 3% from last year's tax bill. So 3% uh, increase from 1120 takes you to 118821. That's a heck of a lot different than the 2800 that you would technically be billed if you were just paying and paying if you were just paying the nominal rate. So you see how that, that um, abatement really comes into play here. Now, next year, oh my gosh, the gold that we thought was under the house that made the house go from 100,000 to 250,000, it was fool's gold. The house is back now down to regular appreciation and it's worth $160,000. That's the what's going on there, the land value, cost replacement value. Now it's worth $160,000. The assessed value is now taken on that $160,000. So 35% of the $160,000 is $59,000. We apply our same 3.2% to that $59,000 and we come up with a tax, a nominal tax bill of 1888. Last year we paid 1188. Are we going to pay 1888 this year? Nope. We can only go up by 3% from last year. So, our tax due, the tax that we paid is going up to 126056 this year. All right. Next year, holy moly, things went horrible. The cost and the land, everything just went to total crappers, right? We're now down to $95,000. So we went from 100,000 to 250 to 160. Now we're at $95,000. All right, so what happens in this situation? Our assessed value is $33,250. Our 3.2%, our nominal rate is $1,064. Now remember, Last year we paid $1,260.56. The abatement caps the growth and the, how much more we pay each year by 3%. But our tax bill is only $1,064. And we paid $1,260. We're not going to pay an extra 50 bucks or so this year. It doesn't just keep going up. They go, you pay the lower of the 3% or what the actual nominal tax bill is. So now taxes come back down and instead of 1260 plus, you know, the $60 that it would go up, now it's 1064. It's the same as the nominal rate. Does that make sense? Okay. 
next year. Now, this is this is the cool part. This is now our new basis and our starting point for the 3% per year. So in year four, now our, our property went up in value again. It went up from 95,000 to 113,000. We have an assessed value of $39,550. Our tax bill, the nominal tax bill is $1,266. Last year we paid $1,064. The year before that we paid 1260, but because last year it only looks at the year before, we are only paying 3% higher than 1064, which is 1095.92. All right, you see how this works? So yes, they reassess your, your property every year, but the taxes can only go up 3% per year. If they go down because the, there's a decline in value, your taxes can go down. But the upward trajectory is limited and capped at 3% from last year's. Making sense? Let's just finish it out here with our next two years. Year five, the value goes up from 113 to 135. Our assessed value is 47,250. Our tax at 3.2%, our nominal tax bill is $1,512. Last year we paid $1,095.92. This year it can only go up 3% from $1,095.92, so it goes up to $1,128.80. All right. Finally, in our last year, year six, we had another good year. The house value it went up. 100 to $170,000, went up by $35,000 in value. With a value of $170,000, the assessment rate of 35% of that means that our assessed value is 59,500. The nominal tax on that 59,500 is $1,904. Last year though, we only paid $1,128. This year, it can go up 3% from last year's number. So we are limited to $1,162.66 in the taxes actually paid. All right, so you see, even though we technically should be paying $1,900, that's the nominal rate, with the abatement, we're saving $800 because last year we paid 11.28, it can only go up by 3%. We only owe $1,162 this year. All right, I hope that little example kind of made it a little bit easier to understand and see some numbers and, and put it kind of in perspective for you. It's very straightforward, well, it's not so straightforward, but it is very easy. Your taxes can only go up by 3% on an owner occupied property. Your taxes, if nominally they go nominally they go down instead of up, you can go down to whatever number. But the upward side of it is capped at 3%, 3% increase from last year. Makes this a very, um, one of the reasons why people move here. The, our, our property taxes are pretty affordable. You throw on top of that, there are no state income taxes. And man, you are making out by moving to Las Vegas. So I hope I did a good job. I hope you got a better feel and you don't get scared because sometimes I get calls from clients and they're like, the, the property taxes are so high. Yes, but, okay. Um, you need to know about the abatement and how that changes things and why the, the nominal rate may be, you know, a fairly decent chunk of change but the effective rate is a pretty darn decent rate, especially for all that you get here. It just makes, you know, moving to Las Vegas in the Las Vegas area a fantastic option. Look, if you want to talk some more about it, go ahead and give me a call, give me a text, uh, send me an email, all the information's down below. I'd love to help you, but that will do it. I hope I gave you the information you need. And if you have questions or whatnot, go ahead and drop them in the comments below. Anyways, Thanks for watching and if I don't see you in the neighborhood, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.